I've wanted to build a simple receiver such as this one uh, for quite some time and I've actually started implementing a super hut um, that is completely modular so you can see I have uh, like an oscillator here, attenuator board there and you know eventually you've got enough of these hooked up together like with the mixer and the amp over there you'll get yourself a super hut receiver but I'm not quite there yet and while I was investigating some issue with this setup uh, this came in the mail it is the ZZRX40 receiver, and Craig Johnson, AA0ZZ, has kindly included the schematic, which I've gone ahead and built up. And just a quick look at here, I'm going to go through different parts. You have the power supply, um, this is 9 to 12 volts DC jack, or you can pick a uh, I think battery or something like that. Yeah, 4 AA batteries. And you get a bunch of uh, capacitors and that just feeds two main ICs. This first one, which does most of the heavy lifting, is the NE602. It is the double balance mixer IC and that is being fed by two inputs. One is the antenna and that goes into some sort of tune circuit filter type thing. Um, and then the other input is an oscillator, this big yellow box. This oscillator can either be a crystal oscillator or a uh, LC oscillator that can be tuned. And this is selected by a jumper cable and it's fed into here. But in a text somewhere it also says that you can actually remove these two jumpers and feed your own signal into one of these pins and I believe in the data sheet it says pin 6. Uh, you can feed a uh, DDS signal straight into there and it expects like a 300 millivolt peak to peak signal max so I have an attenuator on my setup um, but yeah this oscillator feeds that and that combines with this frequency to produce an audio frequency over here which is then amplified by the LM386 now this LM386 is a fairly common audio amplifier chip that I have a couple of at home and it does a pretty good job if it doesn't go motorboating and oscillating all over the place which I did have a couple of issues um, before I play around the capacitor values a little bit and that just runs out to your headphones or something like that and it's right here this is all it is I was missing a couple of uh, capacitor components uh, of different values so I did stuff in parallel and stuff in series to make it all work out and I, right now I have this actually hooked up to my speaker system under my desk right there and I've got a equal audio equalizer out here because there's a lot of um uh, I guess low frequency noise that's just on the receiver right now but I can essentially get rid of most of it with that equalizer and I can turn it on and you see that it's fairly quiet without anything okay and if I move over here to my uh, transceiver, I am on the same frequency that I'm on over there, and I'm going to be doing a small test um, just to see how this works, right? So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this off right now, and then I'm going to show you how much power I'm putting out of this transceiver, okay? It's on Vox right now, so... Right, you see that? The watt meter is essentially not even moving. It's on the 10 watt scale, and it's not even really moving. So now I'm going to turn this back on, and I'm going to go over here and key this transceiver. You can hear kind of like a <laughs> sounds like a ship's horn type thing going on, right? So here, listen again. Okay, and if I tune my transceiver up and down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put the camera on the ground, and I'm going to tune around on my transceiver just a little bit. Alright, so that actually didn't work. <laughs> um, I'm probably not going to edit it out, but here it is again when it actually works. I don't know what was happening before, but uh, listen, I'm going to key this thing with my knee. <laughs> And I'm going to tune, so I'm going to do, I'm going to key with my knee and I'm going to tune it with my head. Here we go. So you can see as I tune it, 
at some point, I'm doing three one. So here, kind of the frequency dip, and it goes right back up again, and that's kind of the um, issue with this receiver. Also, it receives both sides of our oscillator frequency uh, with the same tone, but you can see clearly that it uh, receives. And if I change frequency, you know, like yeah, it just tunes and tracks the uh, receiver. So yeah, well, that kind of worked better. And right in schedule, you can have a quick listen. So it's not too terribly noisy, and see, there it goes when I mess with the connector, there it goes. But I'm going to put that back. And there goes broadcast station, so fun. Hold on. louder. And that music you hear in the background is probably my local um, classical music station. <laughs> yep, there goes the broadcast again. But you can clearly hear the CW behind all that noise. So, Right now, it's actually running off of 5 volts power supply, and it's just that circuit with my DDSBFO driving the oscillator section into the board. And I have a ridiculous amount of audio gain here, so I don't know if this is going to be practical for um, actually ticking out somewhere. And for some reason, there comes music, so... There goes my CW. I probably need some more filtering. This is not the best receiver ever. I'm trying to make one that's better. And as a comparison, here is my uh, Kenwood doing the same job of receiving W1AW. Yeah, this is probably the five word a minute uh, code broadcast, which is why it's super slow. But yeah, the audio level is just about the same as I can get out of, um, with a humongous amount of amplification on the audio side with my, uh, that thing. But definitely from the Kenwood, it's much more of a crisper tone and just better CW in general, but that's to be expected.